with the exception of a minor repair or a small addition, which would probably be just running a little chunk of gas pipe from a shutoff valve to an appliance or something like that, you would need to test it. And even per the code, even those small little runs or additions technically have to be um, tested for leaks with some type of a testing fluid, right? A lot of times guys will use like soapy water. So you spray it on the fitting and if it bubbles up, that means that you know, something's coming out of that. Now, obviously with gas, you're going to smell it, but you, you know, who knows if it's a pinhole leak and you don't smell it or it builds up over time, or if it's underneath a range and that gas is sitting low, it might take time to come out. So you definitely want to make sure that you test all your fittings, test the pipe. Maybe there's a pinhole if you're using a CSST pipe and it was kinked or something. You don't want to leak. Um, but code does say that as an exception to testing and inspection, you can just spray um, fittings and spray the pipe to verify that there's no leaks with an approved uh, testing liquid, which like I said, most people will use soapy water. Um, so we have testing, we have strapping, um, we have bonding. Um, but I wanted to run through the inspection side of it and the testing side of it real fast, jump into bonding a little bit. Um, so if you are doing your own gas pipe, you have an idea of what's needed for your inspection. So let's look at some code real fast. So this would be testing, um, test pressure measurement. So it says test pressure. The test pressure to be used shall be not less than one and a half times the proposed maximum working pressure but not less than three pounds per square inch gauge. Um, where the test pressure exceeds 125 pounds, the test pressure shall not exceed the value that produces a hoop stress in a pipe greater than, you're not gonna end up with anything 125 pounds per square inch gauge. You're gonna be closer to this down here in this three. One and a half times that or not less than three. Where we're at, we require the test to be 10 pounds uh, for 15 minutes. Here, they're asking for the test duration to be not less than 10 minutes. Uh, a lot of times, contractors will put the gas test on the night before, they'll do it in the morning, and they'll just call us for an inspection that day, and we just show up and make sure that it's holding. Uh, so sometimes you might want to run the test gauge up higher um, just to make sure that it does hold. If the, um, if the temperature outside fluctuates enough, so can that gauge, right? So if someone puts on their test gauge at night and the temperatures drop and then the inspector shows up in the morning, well, that gauge could be all wonky with what it was when you left or when you first aired it up. Like I said, for us, it's 10 pounds for 15 minutes per code. It's telling you one and a half times the proposed maximum working pressure, but not less than three pounds per square inch gauge. Well, that depends on where you're at. You'd have to call your local building department and ask them what they require for their test. So you have an idea what to put it on. And you're just going to get an air gauge and you're going to hook it up to the end of the pipe and you're going to fill it up with air or an approved uh, testing material, testing agent gas or, or something like that. And I'll, I'll actually show you it is listed here in the code. So pipe support. Um, piping shall be supported with metal pipe hooks, metal pipe straps, metal bands, metal brackets, metal hangers, um, or building structural components suitable for the size of the pipe. Um, in a nutshell, make sure all your gas pipe supported. Uh, you know, sometimes you're just screwing through floor joists and the floor joists themselves are holding it up. Sometimes it's sitting under the floor joist, so you strap to it, you put hooks on it. Um, you know, a lot of times if you've got joints, you might want to strap on either side of the joint. Um, if it's the corrugated pipe, you know, it's a lot looser, so you might need more straps to keep it as straight as possible and clean as possible. So we have inspection, testing, and purging. So inspection shall consist of a visual inspection. So the inspector is going to look at all your joints, sizing, um, during and after manufacture, fabrication, assembly, and pressure test. So again, you're going to have the test. 
they're going to come out and do what they call a rough-in inspection, right? So that's the main stub and the main branch line stub to where the units are going to go. Uh, the furnace may not be installed, the hot water tank may not be installed, but the gas is run, it's all capped, and it's got the test gauge on it. They're going to make sure everything's strapped, bonded, and uh, has sediment traps, shutoff valves. There's all the things that it needs to have, um, that it's sized properly, and that the test is holding. Section testing. You don't have to test the whole house. You can test just simply the line that you're adding. So if you've got a shutoff valve, uh, from the new line. So if you're running a new line onto an existing, put a shutoff valve right there and you can shut it off. You can test from that shutoff valve all the way back to wherever your new appliance is. And then your section testing. You still have to test under the, whatever the testing requirements are, but you don't have to drain or, or shut off at the meter and test the entire system again, if that makes sense. So testing medium. Uh, they're talking about, so the test medium shall be air, nitrogen, carbon dioxide, or an inert gas. Oxygen shall not be used as a test medium. When it comes to homeowners, do-it-yourselfers, I don't think anybody's going to go out there and buy nitrogen or carbon dioxide or uh, would even think about using oxygen. Most people just air it up with a compressor and you're good to go. So, But just in case, I don't know, maybe you've got some type of uh, gas bottle laying around that fits that requirement and just make sure it's one of those and that you're doing it safely and properly. So when it comes to bonding, it's like, well, what is bonding? I'm sure in older houses you've seen uh, like a copper grounding wire so that might run through the basement of a house and it connects the water pipe, um, connects the gas pipe, even metal, right? So if you have old galvanized water pipes or you have cast iron drain pipes if you have then a metal gas pipe it needs to be bonded and so usually what they'll do is they'll bond from the panel and they'll bond to all these specific metal pipes and they'll clamp onto it and they'll have that that copper line will run back to the panel uh, to protect it from becoming energized so essentially grounding it is what they're doing but I want to make sure you understand the code, and then I'll, I'll, I've got some pictures that I'll show you. So it says, where installed in or attached to a building or structure, metal piping systems, including gas pipe, capable of becoming energized, shall be bonded to the service equipment enclosure, the grounded conductor at the service, the grounding electrode conductor, where of sufficient size or to one or more grounding electrodes used. So if you have a grounding rod or something like that. So again, in a nutshell, it's just like, make sure you're protecting anything from becoming energized. So let's look at a few pictures. Okay, so here's a few pictures um, when it comes to bonding. Um, so here you can see the clamp around this gas pipe right here, and you can see the copper line that would then run back to the service gear and make sure that it's all grounded. Um, here this is a cast iron uh, plumbing drain pipe, so they bonded that as well. Um, here we've got, this is the water line coming into the house. They bonded that. There's another picture, they actually have two bonds on it. There's the water line, it's not hooked up yet. Uh, but they bonded it again, they clamped it on there, tightened the nut. Um, it's another picture of the bonding of the gas pipe. Um, and so when it comes to testing, right, you're going to make sure you have your pressure gauge. You're going to fill it up with air, make sure everything's capped. Um, call your building department, find out what kind of tests they require, what the size has to be as far as how many pounds on the gauge you need to get to and have hold. And uh, once it passes, usually they're going to put a sticker on it or they're going to tape something near it to show that that gas pipe has been approved. When you call your utility company, if your gas meter is shut off or you don't have a gas meter, maybe it's a new house, they're not going to put that in and hook it up until there's an approval that they can see. They're going to want to know that that gas pipe has been approved um, to be turned on. Sometimes they'll come set the meter, but they're going to lock it out. They'll lock out the, the meter. They won't hook it up. Maybe they'll hook it up, but it'll leave it locked until they get that approved um, gas inspection. So that's why, again, I would tell you, check with your building department. If they're going to require a permit, um, 
you're going to want to get one. You're going to want to make sure that you get approval um, for that gas line so that the, the gas company will make sure to turn your meter on. Now, obviously, if you're just running a barbecue line, you already have your gas working in your house, utility company is not going to know the difference. So just be safe, strap everything, test everything, and um, follow your local building department requirements.